Everyone is calling for renewable energies, and here a wind turbine is being dismantled? For Jens Monsis, this is not a contradiction, but the path to sustainability. Dismantling a wind turbine, you always think it was put up somehow, so that's how it's dismantled. But there are no dismantling instructions, no proper tools, sometimes you even have to make your own. You have to make sure that safety at work is also a priority. But what's all this got to do with sustainability? We've checked that out. Eight o'clock in the morning on a wind power field just outside Hanover. Today, a wind turbine is coming down. The reason? Bearing damage. But what do you do with old wind turbines? The magic word? Recycling. And that is unique in the whole of Europe. Might sound simple, but it's complicated. The steel towers are no problem to recycle. The challenge is the blades. They are made of glass fibre reinforced plastic. Glass fibre, reinforced plastics or GRP for short, are composites made of polyester or epoxy resin and, logically, glass fibres. Once it has hardened, it's difficult to separate again and it's extremely waterproof. That is why these plastics are used wherever extreme stability is required. In ships, airplanes or even in roller coasters. Once they've done their job, the problems begin, as plastics have long been considered non-decomposable. The only option? Burning. But this only works to a limited extent and, in the long run, destroys the incinerators. The solution? A new recycling process. In just a few steps, it turns the wings into fine cement. How does it work? Step one, roll out the carpet. We're now laying out the fleece where we also cut the blades later, so that afterwards we can catch the dust that's produced during cutting with water, and then it's filtered, the water runs through, and the material that remains on it is also professionally recycled afterwards. To make it all work, team spirit is needed. Well, I'm in the office a lot, so it's nice to be out here doing my bit. One thing is still missing, water. This binds a large part of the dust on the fleece and prevents it simply being blown into the environment. Recycling the blades is worthwhile, because the glass fibres are made of raw sand. This special sand is the number one building material worldwide. Amount needed per year, 30 billion tonnes. Cost per tonne, 12 euros. But so far, no one's been interested in GRP recycling. The reason is that recycling is far too complicated. Frank Kroll sees things differently. That's why six years ago he started the revolution. If we find ways to extract raw sand from other known recyclables, then it's our damn duty to think about it and find ways to do it. And in the blades there's quite a bit of raw sand, up to 10 tonnes depending on the size. We're talking about 34 metres of rotor blades per unit, and I think you only see the size when you're down here. But to get the sand out, the blades first have to come down. A week earlier, the team dismantles the blades by hand. This requires strong nerves and strong cranes. Dismantling takes a whole day. Only on the ground do the helpers separate the blades from the hub. Once everything's in place, the noisiest step can begin, cutting them. The 34 metres are now cut into six metre long sections. This is the only way to fit everything into the container. Another advantage is that measuring means fewer cuts and less dust. A bonus point in terms of sustainability. But now, let's get to work and cover our ears. All this trouble for the perfect cut. Water is needed so that the saw doesn't overheat. Hand on heart, a huge saw and lots of action sounds like a real dream job, doesn't it? 
No matter how old you are, I think we're all still little kids. Big machines, lots of noise, I think everybody likes that. In addition to the GRP, the blades are also made of wood, construction foam and an earthing cable. The fine glass fibers really put the saw to the test. The diamond saw blade lasts for about eight rotary blades. But what happens to the pieces now? Architects, furniture makers and others have already thought about that. For example, there is a windmill garden furniture made of rotor blades, or slides for children. The advantage is, they last forever. There could even be wind turbines in your house. The new recycling method quickly turns them into cement, and that's in the walls of lots of houses. The recycling process is supposed to be sustainable and environmentally friendly. That's why the blades are put in the container for the time being. Now we can see whether the measurements were correct. If everything fits, the parts can now go to the special factory. Good for us, but that is not yet the case everywhere in the world. On the internet, we find pictures from the USA. Here, for example, rotor blades from old wind turbines are not dismantled, but simply buried in the desert. Nobody here wants that. I think what we're showing here now is the right way to increase acceptance, to convince people and say, we're doing it right, we're doing it sensibly, and we're also doing it for you, and also for the future, for our descendants, so that they might still be able to experience this planet. To make sure this works, they are now going to Germany's only factory that managed to recycle GRP, something factory manager Hans-Dieter Wilken is very proud of. You think up something, you try to realize it, and suddenly you're standing on the stage in Berlin at the Green Tech Award, and we get the prize for having come up with the recycling idea of the year. And of course, that made us incredibly proud. Glass fiber has been around in industry since 1935, recycling only for a few years. But meanwhile, the method has been refined. And it looks like this. The materials are mixed with waste paper residues and go into a kind of meat grinder. A large roller grinds everything to about 30 centimeters. But that's not enough. We need it much smaller so that the glass fibers can be properly utilized. Only when everything is small enough can the chips crystallize into cement. For this, we need powerful helpers. More precisely, huge iron chains. And they are at the heart of the plant, the crossflow shredder, a really nasty name. Not a new invention, but indispensable for shredding GRP. The whole thing works like in a centrifuge. The revolutions create a kind of tornado that presses everything against the wall and draws it at the same time. Stefan Gross knows exactly how everything works. Our crossflow shredder basically has two chains like this, which rotate at 680 revolutions, and everything that gets in the way of these chains is smashed to pieces. In simple terms, it works like this. The metal chains thrash the material until the pieces fit through the holes. The small snippets then end up in a warehouse. The plant processes about 30,000 tons of glass fiber reinforced plastics every year. This is not a process where you can say that it's bought off the shelf, that it always works the same way. We have to put a lot of sweat and energy into it so that it works every day. There's still one final step to complete the recycling. The finished mixture is now sent to the cement works. And they turn it into, well, what do you think? Exactly, cement. And it works very simply. The chipping mixture goes into a 30-meter-long drum in the cement plant. The temperature in the drum is 1,200 degrees, so all the waste paper burns almost without pollutants. At the bottom, all that remains of the rotor blade is cement, and you can then buy it in DIY stores.
It's an innovation. We simply have to promote it and convince people and say, look, we can do it like this. We have a solution and that's something that makes you really proud. And this solution is unique in Europe. Discarded glass fibre reinforced plastics can be recycled. For example, in the foundations of new, even more effective wind turbines, or as valuable cement, perhaps even in your next construction project, a perfect recycling cycle.